Yay! And now I have to change presenter back to me. So I'll give you back presenter in a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right, change presenter back to me. And there we go. Mm -hmm. um, I'm ready. Show my screen. Hello, everyone. We're just giving people a little bit more time to arrive, but I want you to know that we're here and ready to go. And if you have any problems or questions with um, accessing our session, please um, go to the questions area and fill out a question. We're excited to see that there are 13 people here. Mm -hmm. um, um, who are you talking to? <laughs> I'm talking to the attendees. They can hear what I'm saying. <laughs> I wanted them to know that something was going on and that okay. it's yeah. that. Can you repeat your name, please? What was your name? My I, name I is Becky Rares. I'm the moderator. Okay, okay Becky. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> we just met, so. Okay, perfect. They'll know why you're asking, who am I? Who is the woman on the other line talking? Uh, so everyone is listening to us now? Yes, Come they on. are. Oh, oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're listening to us. Oh, oh. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you know, this happens. Yeah. Here, I'll send them a chat message. Um, yeah. Let's see, we will start in three minutes in case they didn't hear us. How do you like my little flyer? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's what the audience sees. Okay. Do. Someone asked a question. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. Someone said they can't wait. Oh, that's very nice of you. Guzman, you have you have fans. Guzman, you're still there, right? All of a sudden it went quiet. <laughs> okay. Two minutes and counting. One minute to show down.
It's time. Oh, great. Hi, I'm Becky Rares, your session moderator. Welcome to the 11 to 11.45 Sakai Faculty Showcase, Activating Sakai Lesson Tool for Autonomous Learning of Grammar and Business English. Um, the presenter is going to be Dr. Guzman Manto Bares, and he has a PhD in English Studies, a Master's in E-Learning from the Open University of Catalonia. He is the coordinator of the online master's program on applied linguistics and a member of the Applied Linguistics Circle at Yeda University. He's interested in the interface between foreign language learning and technology. He's edited a multi-authored issue on the use of wikis in Spain. And he supervises two PhD candidates on 2.0 technology and its impact on foreign language learning. Now, for a couple of housekeeping things before we start. You're all muted, but if you have any questions, please enter them in the GoToWebinar questions box. You can enter the questions at any time, and we'll address them at the end of the session in about a half an hour. The session is being recorded, and it'll be available later at the Apero YouTube channel. And if you have any problems with your video or audio, enter a comment in the questions box. And please welcome Dr. Guzman Montalberis. And now I'm going to change the presenter to you. And you need to show your screen. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me just get my PowerPoint ready from the beginning. There it is. OK. I just assume that everything is fine now, technically speaking. Yes, it is. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, OK, thank you. So good morning to the American audience and good afternoon to the European audience. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Becky, for the uh, introduction and thank you um, for uh, for being with with me for this session. Um, so uh, let me say um, to start with that uh, it is the first time that I'm, I'm participating at a webinar, so I'm really excited about this and uh, and I hope that everything goes as well. And also um, um, I'm more of a, a pedagogic oriented uh, person uh, involved in in, uh, in e-learning. So uh, whenever I have had some problems dealing with uh, e-learning, I have uh, technical problems. I mean, I have to rely on the IT personnel from personnel from my university, and you will see um, these uh, all through my presentation. So let's see if this moves on. I want to change slides. There it is. So this is the outline of my presentation. I'll talk about. Talk briefly about my university, about the presence of Sakai at, uh, at the UDL of the university. Next, the pedagogical context, which is business English one. Then the design of um, of the activity of the lessons according to pedagogy and technology. Some pedagogical applications and results. And last but not least, some final remarks on um, based on opinion, research, etc. Okay, so um, as I say, um, we are play, we are located um, uh, at Data University. Data University is based in Data City. Data City is one uh, European uh, one city um, as um, in in Europe, as you can see in Spain. Um, okay, Guzman. Uh, Guzman, yeah. excuse me. You're still on the first um, slide. You might be uh, paused on it. You need to change the the presentation so that other people can see the next slide. I ha I did change. Okay. I meant on the viewing screen sharing area. You might have clicked so that you're paused on the first slide. That's oh. all I'm seeing right now is the first slide. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's see. How am I supposed to do this then? Um, uh, where it says show my screen. Okay. okay there it was. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. You went to a new slide. Okay, okay, perfect. So, uh, so this was this was the outline as I, I mentioned before. Okay, and now I was just introducing uh, where we are located. Let's see how this moves on. There it is. Um, this is the map of Europe, and Data University is located where the uh, pin with the A is is um, is on the map. Uh, Data University is a, s a small sized university with, with 1,100 uh, students, um, according to the to 2012 and 13 um, uh, course. Let's see if I move on. 
Okay. Uh, what about Sakai at the university? Well, it's been at uh, the university since 2004, and the version that we're using at the moment is 2.9.2. The available tools now are um, um, can be on any of these. Uh, whenever the, the teacher starts to design his or her um, course, he can he or she can uh, can select uh, whatever is needed uh, for their for, for their courses. Uh, from uh, by default, the site info is there, but uh, we can find we can select home academic guide for the UDL uh, from the beginning, and we we move to the to, to the bottom uh, the test and quizzes, web content, wiki, etc. As far as I know, there may be some. Some of these tools, especially designed uh, for the for by the UDL um, by the UDL um, IT staff, as far as I say, as I know. Let me move on about lessons. The lessons tool, um, according to the uh, IT IT staff, the lessons the, the lessons tool has has been available at the university since 2013, so not uh, long uh, not long ago. And the version that we are using at the moment is 1.4, with some elements with the 1.5 version. I have to admit that I don't really know what these uh, what the, the kind the, these elements are, but if if there is a question about that, uh, I'll just take it and ask and I'll, uh, my colleagues from the IT department and I'll, I'll be happy to answer um, um, well, um, at some other day. So having said this, let, let, let me present, let me present uh, the pedagogical framework. What is of interest is, is the subject I coordinate, which is Business English 1. Um, it's an obligatory subject in business studies. It is being offered in the first year and running now in the first semester. And there are 2,070 students approximately enrolled in this year at the, at the moment. It's been offered since 2009 and 10 in, in, uh, in, in the syllabus. Um, and um, especially for the European, for the European, uh, for the European um, attendees, the, um, it, it bears six ECTS credits. And for those who are not uh, familiar with the Bologna process, this um, uh, one ECTS amounts to 25, sorry, 25 hours of students. Uh, student workload, so six ECTS would amount to 150 hours of student involvement in, in the subject. Um, out of these 150 hours, 60 hours um, are face-to-face -face and 90 hours um, are devoted to autonomous learning. So um, for these 90 hours of autonomous learning, be, um, since 2009-10 until last year, we have designed. We have two. We have we have had two models of activities. One, uh, on the one hand, offline autonomous individual activities, for example, reading graded booklets. Remember, business English. That's the subject. Uh, recycling, living, Microsoft to change the world, for example, are just titles um, that we make our students read. And also, um, in a printed dossier that students have to buy from the photocopy desk, they have been able to find their individual uh, well, practice um, of grammar activities to be done individually. Um, also, we have included the solutions for these. Um, on the other hand, students also have, have had online activities, which I list here with, with the Sakai tools uh, we have employed. Um, they, they have had to submit reading or listening activities using the activity tool, collaborative writing with the wiki, and um, also the submission of self-corrected vocabulary and grammar tests using um, the test and quizzes um, um, tool exactly. So. Up to last year, um, we we can see that students have had um, already have had some the ability have had materials and content to practice to practice grammar. However, okay, um, let me say we have had, we are having a problem in terms of in terms of the grammar accuracy with our students uh, because at the end of the semester, um, students have to sit for a twenty. 20 points, so to speak, 20 points um, uh, test, which includes grammar questions, technical vocabulary questions, and a listening, and 
and uh, I have um, put it in bold, uh, the problem that we're having at the moment, we, have, we are having exactly. So despite, let me read this, despite offline and online support, the questions on grammar show very low results. So uh, we have just had the feeling that students were not uh, doing the activities, were not uh, really paying much attention to to those to those to that content uh, as the results were were showing. So um, fortunately, okay, um, it was it was in late uh, in, uh, in late June that one of my colleagues from the IT department, uh, David Manjon, who who has ha, ha, uh, who has just had present, who had who have just presented, um, um, uh, have made a presentation, I mean this, uh, in your morning, um, he asked me whether I could uh, be a beta tester of, the, of a tool that he had developed using, using the lessons tools. And I said, sure, I will help you. And thanks to that, to that uh, participation, I got to know what um, the lessons tool um, meant on how um, it was it could be used in our classes. So uh, that was um, in late June. So I decided to um, get get ready all the materials um, for the next for the next uh, year before before uh, summer holidays, and and insert uh, design design activities using lesson, lesson tools with the final objective of improving the, grammar the, the results of the grammar question. Um, from what I saw um, uh, with uh, David Manjon's presentation um, was the fact that uh, what attracted me really from the lessons tool was the fact that it was possible to create learning routes for grammar for, for, and for, by, by, uh, with the use of the lessons grammar roots. So that was important uh, with the, uh, because that, that would imply that we could somehow um, design or try a new, new or different online delivery. Um, so I'd say different from we, uh, we have done so far, which was perhaps a mass delivery to, to everyone. So for the time, for this course, for this first semester, we, are, uh, we have told our students that the lessons tool with all the, with all the, um, with all the lessons are optional. They can, they can use them, but um, they, they do know that by the end of the semester, again, they will have to sit for an exam amounting to 20, 20 points in all, and in that exam there are some questions dealing with, with grammar. So let's move on to the, the pedagogical and technological design of this. Um, I decided to create one lesson per grammar topic. I have decided to order the lessons from um, the, the, mo the simplest to the most complex part in, 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 a, in a text, so from words to, to, a main, to, to a whole text, from words uh, meaning um, words, articles, adjectives, so different wor um, word classes to um, a whole text. So um, um, the, in the, the, last, um, the last lesson has to do with connectors. Um, the, the one previously, previous, the last one, uh, is about uh, relative clauses. That is, uh, this is the, the boy, that, uh, who, whom, whatever this kind of thing. So I also decided that each lesson should contain at the moment um, some explanations about each grammar point, some, ex uh, some practice, and finally a test. And in order to create these grammar, the, sorry, these, uh, these, uh, these routes, these learning paths, I decided to, uh, to implement a requisite. Uh, and that's, this is key. This is central uh, for all for all the for all these um, for all this project. So whenever, so only when a student obtains 50% of the grade will the next lesson be activated. And the students know this, know this from the very beginning of the of the of the, of the semester. And the the final the, the final instruction is once all the lessons are completed, then all the lessons are open and active to each each student. So um, this is uh, what the interfa interface um, at the university looks like. So this is part of the technological design. As you see um, on the left, you can find the well the the link to the to the lessons, which I changed the name 
of which I changed into lessons de grammatica, so grammar lessons in uh, that is in Catalan, and here you can find the ten lessons. The asterisk on the left means that there is a requisite, that there is something to do, in this case a test, the test which was previously designed and um, it, which is stored in the uh, test and quizzes, um, um, say, pool, okay. So, uh, there you can see it. Okay, here are some the instructions, okay, which you could, you can, you could find up the, uh, on top, uh, which is the first, the first, um, say, um, the first lesson instructions. So, again, um, just a quick presentation for the students, so 10 lessons with 10 grammar points, each lesson has some explanations, practice tests, and again, the important requisite. They should they should pass the 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 test. Otherwise, the next lesson would not be activated. And in order to make them aware of the importance of these lessons, we did, I decided to write that there will be less uh, questions on the final exam about these these topics. Um, this is what now uh, one lesson looks like, especially uh, specifically nouns, as you see uh, in yellow highlighted. Uh, that is text. Uh, for each for each section for each part, so this this uh, this uh, specifically explanations or practice countable and countable nouns or uh, specifically for nouns spelling plural forms. So there, these are just external links for students to practice. And at the bottom again, um, you can you can read test and below that the the link to to nouns and, and for just just to repeat the same idea. As uh, students um, are, uh, know, if they read these, they know that they have to pass the test in order to have the next lesson um, active. Um, since the requisite um, criterion was so important for 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 this for, for this project, um, I, um, I had to I had to um, somehow look for it and, and uh, activate it. So uh, once I were uh, once uh, I had already created the test, I had to ed edit the test, and uh, as I see, I had to select the. To, to click on the ch on these on these um, on these requisites, okay, and specifically um, where it says there in the middle 22, that is uh, the 50 percent of the of the of the test, 50 percent of the test. So that that, uh, that, that of course means that uh, whoever gets uh, 44 points um, is a, um, a a plus a plus mark. Um, this is um, a screenshot of what one student is is do um, uh, has has arrived to at the moment in order to preserve her um, um, her identity. I have changed her name. Um, so Laya Smith, for example. This is the screenshot uh, from her from her, as I say from her from, from yeah, last week. Okay. So we can see that um, she has already done all the tests until models, okay, this means that she has passed all the tests and we don't still know what, she, uh, what she's doing with the passive voice. Uh, we don't know whether she has tried, whether she has tried and not passed, so um, uh, basically, basically that's, that's it, okay. Um, now, um, a bit of, of Commentary on the problems that um, I have come uh, have come across and how I have solved them. I have to admit that these lessons were designed by by a sole ranger. Uh, so this is how I typify myself while using IT. But I really appreciate the, all the help and support from the IT department uh, from the university. So my great my my great thanks. Uh, to David uh, Barroso, Alex Valleste, um, Mateo Diaz, if you are if you are around, so hello to you and many thanks. Um, I came across a problem uh, while I was adding the external links. Um, I haven't mentioned this, but each external link is um, is added as as if it were a resource um, in each or on each lesson. Um, but then, um, once I finished um, building up, designing all the lessons, I went to the resource um, on the on the left 
on the left menu, so the main the main area of, of of the subject, and I discovered that all the all the links that I had already add, um, added on the lessons were also there. So it was like, so why do I need that uh, also there? So I decided to delete it, to delete sorry, to delete them all all those resources, and uh, well, so I happily went through all all these. So I went, I deleted all of that. Um, so, um, so that was just before my summer holidays. So when I went back to 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 have a look at the lessons before going on holidays, I I just saw that everything had been deleted by by me, and I thought, oh no, dear. So everything that I had done now has this had disappeared. So I thought that now it's time to take to take some holidays, really. And once uh, so when I returned after holidays, I I went right away to visit the IT people and they, they helped me to recover all the all the information so I really thank them for, for that. We have had also some problems uh, uh, with some marks of, the, uh, of, of, some, of some lessons which have not been added to the gradebook. Um, I also uh, reported this problem to the IT uh, people and they, um, they, they, they have seen that some of those um, tests with, um, um, which, um, which uh, average, uh, sorry, which the passing mark contained a decimal, decimal number um, had problems. Okay, so um, we, we, um, they decided to develop a patch uh, to solve that, that problem. So um, Albert, uh, Alex Valleste seems to have done this, and uh, the Sakai community developers, uh, the Sakai developers community seems to be aware of this already. Uh, what are the applications, as far as I see, uh, of the lessons? Uh, to start with, I can track students' performance by means of the of the grade book. I can get to know what the average grade is of each lesson. Let me show you uh, the same information by a bar uh, using a bar chart. As you see, um, um, only only one, two, three, eight lessons have been um, somehow done so far by the students, and uh, it seems that the passive voice um, content, grammatical content, seems to have more pro uh, students seem to have more problems with this content together with adjectives. So it's something um, it, uh, which is a, a diagnosis of, of what may go, go on, and perhaps some remedial activities could be done um, um, in face to face classrooms. Um, also, I could um, take a look um, by, um, by visiting the test and quizzes section of Sakai. I, could, I can note the number of deliveries of, of each of the quizzes. Um, here is the same, the same information, the same data uh, with a bar chart. And you can tell um, the nouns, which was the first lesson, um, was delivered by 60, by 60 students out of remember 270 okay so not not a high number of students are really or seem to be really concerned uh, about uh, about grammar content but still um i am uh, well I'll leave, it, I'll leave it for the end um say so, um this was the now the nouns lesson was open to uh, to everyone which because it was the first one, but as you see, as we move on along the line, um, it decreases by half almost. So articles was uh, has been uh, in this week eight of the semester has been done by uh, 30 students, um, adjectives by 20, uh, prepositions by 10, and so on and so forth. So not many people, not many students are seem to be really uh, involved at the moment uh, with um, practicing these these grammar points. Uh, now, uh, wrapping up um, this um, the, this presentation, there were um, some per some um, some some opinions about the lessons tool. The positive aspects that I see is that uh, this tool is welcomed um, because it's an integrative tool, as it uh, it can uh, con it can have at the same on the same somehow 
pool page or um, um, the content um, that the students have to um, have to interact with together with the activities, be that a test or debate or um, uh, comments. Um, so uh, for students, there's no need to navigate by um, through the the site created for the for the. Um, uh, for the subject. Um, I think um, uh, by means of creating those requisites, um, we can improve the content delivery so uh, learning routes can be, can be created. I have mentioned only one requisite which is um, uh, in relation to to test, the, uh, the need to pass one of the tests, but there may be other requisites such as time, okay, different lessons can be active at different times and so even some, some lessons can be um, made, can, can be made um, inactive for, for students. So in a way you may be forcing students to, to, uh, to carry out these, these activities. What are the negative aspects um, about, um, about, about the, the version of uh, 1.4 that I see for tools? Uh, the fact that the, uh, the page layout is vertically oriented, it cannot expand horizontally, uh, a grid template cannot be used unless we insert some text, but then again, if we insert some text, uh, we cannot um, uh, include there some, some uh, resources, some multimedia, etc. And within that page and uh, that grid, uh, graphic design options would be quite desirable. Now, further improvements for the next year, I would um, I would like to to improve to improve language errors, which we have seen in the different texts. Um, also, make obligatory test students taking the test for the time being and uh, the students um, do not really, um, well, it, it, it is optional doing, the, doing, these, doing these lessons, but I would like to make it obligatory and I would like it, uh, which is the, thir the third improvement, I would like to, uh, to, use, to, the, to use the grade that the students obtain of the grammar practice um, in the final, in the final, uh, in the final grade of business English. Uh, as an example, I could use the highest mark in each lesson, for example. Um, based on what we are doing at the moment, I think we can uh, we can carry out some um, imp uh, interesting research. As I say, based on the fact that uh, lessons are optional in the subject, but the grammar questions in the exam um, are obligatory. In other words, the exam is obligatory as long as a student wants to uh, obtain 100% of the, of, the, uh, of the whole grade uh, in the subject. Uh, so based on this, I think it is, um, uh, we could find, we could use the data from Sakai, uh, from lessons, to, um, to, to, to see whether we, we can find support or confirm or deny this hypothesis. So those students with the same mark in language proficiency in their pretest who follow grammar lessons obtain better results in grammar questions than those who do not follow. Uh, let me explain uh, this briefly, if I may. Uh, um, uh, at the beginning of the semester, the students uh, take a pretest. Um, in, in different skills and one of, one of the uh, skills on, uh, on also content and one of, one of the questions, some questions deal with grammar lessons. So at the moment we already have uh, information about, about the language proficiency of each, of each student. And so uh, it would be really interesting by the end of the semester to make two groups of students, those uh, with the same uh, pre-test mark so those who have those who have followed followed grammar lessons and those who haven't followed grammar lessons, and then compare their uh, their results in the grammar questions in the exam. So uh, this would be interesting to see to test the efficiency of the grammar lessons. Okay, we have designed. So that was that was it. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Gracias and, and gracias. So back to you, Becky.
Oops, I muted myself. I just sent an announcement to um, in chat to everyone, and hopefully they'll see that if they have questions to ask you, to please go to the question box and type them in. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions about lessons or the research? Does anybody want to raise their hand? <laughs> yeah. Did I go too fast, perhaps? Oh, hold it. I see some. Um, Thank you for the presentation. At Oxford UK, we are about to use and promote the Lessons Tool too. Just a quick mm -hmm. comment. You can embed multimedia into a lesson, such as YouTube videos, or you can also link to video files and resources. Sure. And another person um, stated, are you considering adapting any part of your course into a mobile app? Oh. <laughs> I wish I could really. Um, um, I would really need. I would really need the, the support of the IT uh, department here. Um, it's something. It's a. It's a big project. Um, I would go for it, but what we need is real support and finance. And finance. But that would really be interesting, especially business English, because uh, we could make students go out to the to the to the, to the city around uh, finding. Uh, Finding the information and then share share with the rest once they have they come to class. So sure, sure, it will be really interesting. And thank you to the Oxford. Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't get the um, the where you come from, Oxford University. UK. Uh, Oxford, it just said University. Oxford yeah. UK. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, once I started started um, taking a look at the different possibilities to to design the lessons with I just um, I, I, I saw I saw that um, I could uh, click on uh, click on uh, multimedia or, or, or just resources which would link to external links but yeah uh, I'm aware of it yeah sure but I, uh, my objective at the moment was was simply to, to have the same sort of sort of a structure for each of the lessons so that as students would not be um, puzzled uh, so to speak whenever they they would move uh, they would change to a new, to a new lesson but um, that would help really that would help perhaps uh, motivating them if if the resource um, that they use to to revise these grammar lessons is is more is a multimedia nature instead of just plain um, I don't know plain explanations or textual plain explanations sure I admit it that somehow we have to improve it yeah thank you Chris, for UK and right now I'm not seeing any other questions oh hold it there's some more yay um, thanks for the presentation are students completing all independently all of the tests, or do they also have some interactive or forum participation as well? No, no, no. So far, we have. Um, I have designed those lessons um, so that they complete all the tests, and once completed, they get a mark, and they see whether um, they have passed the test or not. Um, so so far, um, so far, this is how I have designed it. And um, I, I rather I rather wor um, work I rather um, design this this tool um, on an on, the, on an individual basis, um, as I believe that um, grammar accuracy it's it's a content uh, it's a content uh, that students have to work on at the moment. Um, so th this is basically my my reason. Um, um, there, um, in, there are other units within this uh, subject, 
uh, well, there are four, four units that uh, the subject is designed in. Um, in one of the units, uh, students visit the wiki and there they, they write collaboratively um, about um, how to improve how to improve um, well, the recycling part of, uh, of, of, of some businesses. So um, hopefully those students who have already who have taken those lessons will be more, say, uh, grammar aware and uh, will uh, write uh, more accurately, uh, grammatically speaking, um, in those those lessons. But um, not for the grammar lessons. Uh, that there is that there is um, um, some kind of a collaboration. But yes, outside the grammar lessons. I don't know if I have answered what I was asked about this. I'm a bit concerned, really, because it's it's a very huge class uh, on Sakai, very huge class, having to um, coordinate so many students um, um, using using all the tools at the same time can be uh, can be dangerous, really, if you do not follow. Um, some models and also some some the rules that we have established. So um, um, I'm not um, so basically um, that, that's that's my concern really. They, having very big classes. They yeah, thanked sorry. you for the answer and they said if it's a large class that makes sense to have them work independently to learn first. Sure, sure, I agree with that. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Okay, we have another question. Thank you for the presentation. This is external from lessons, but if you were to teach the course entirely online, do you have a strategy to assess oral competencies? Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I don't really. I, I don't not. Um, um, <laughs> I, um, via, via Skype, I would say. I would use via Skype and, and have uh, with a good rubric and then um, and face to face, uh, sorry, uh, via Skype I would I would just um, well make uh, uh, make some questions and then and see how they react okay um, that for the for the uh, interaction for the for the presentation part uh, for the oral presentation skill we do have in, in our classes um, a unit in which students have to present um, face to face though and um, uh, a company profile and uh, the rubric of which are these um, listed uh, speaking parts um, is already available for for students but I would um, I would uh, for the time being I would not use Sakai so it is part of those 60 hours in which students would like uh, I would like them to have to, uh, to to practice and would like them to have in class so um, I am um, I don't know whether it happens in other parts of Europe or, or in the world here in Spain we're really having a problem in terms of language proficiency foreign language proficiency which is confidence you can you can tell that um, they don't feel uh, they feel um, like um, they don't know a lot and they do know okay it's just a question of pushing them uh, making them um, like aware that they know a lot that, that they know enough and start uh, and creating situations in which in which they can practice in which which seem don't seem to happen quite often before at least uh, in in the context where where I'm working. You have a couple of other questions now. Um, another person, thank you for the presentation. This is such a nice crowd. Um, their question is: Is there any other ways students get feedback on their performance other than the test score? Like, are there adaptive model modules? Excuse me, where they can go back to lower level exercises? Oh, um, uh, thank you, thank you for the question. Um, there could be as long as um, we design these modules and then we combine them. Sure, sure. But something um, I, 
I kept on asking um, the previous years um, to the IT personnel whether I could create learning paths. I just said, well, what about um, on activating one topic as long as one test um, is, um, is passed, so to speak, mm -hmm. or one activity is, um, obtains more than five, for example, and the, 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 question, the, the answer was thought always negative. No, there's no way you can do one. So, yeah, but, um, but of course you have to sit, sit down and, and then create those modules and see how they combine. Okay. Yeah. okay, you have another question um, or suggestion. Have you considered adding peer um, graded assignments in some parts of your course? Like now, you can, now there's peer um, assessment available. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I saw, I saw, I saw it. Uh, thank you, thank you for suggesting. I think it is interesting, really, um, that somehow would empower. Those already who have some some empowerment um, in in foreign in foreign language in English as a foreign language, I, I would do so. But uh, I would be really very very cautious with these. Um, as as I say, my classes are extremely high. I, I really have high numbers of students. So it would be a question of of um, like from um, testing and, and doing some some testing before before launching it um, like to the whole classes. But uh, it, that would be interesting, really, because uh, um, in face-to-face -face classes, whenever we do group activities, like four uh, group activities of four students, you can tell it's it's very effective. It's much more effective, I would say, than me just talking and repeating. Um, yes, I agree with this. Yeah. And another poster said that um, with the poster who was asking about. Um, adaptive modules and can your students go back to lower level exercises they said what they've done to do what they've been doing is they tend to provide students with resources from the cloud so that they can still get to the go back to the lower level exercises mm -hmm. okay that would that would be really really interesting interesting to do but um, see the commitment that I get from the university is to teach business English and but um, as students get to university to my classes they are supposed to be taught to be to instructed in business English but I discovered that uh, the grammar grammatical accuracy is very poor so that's why my concern about uh, improving this grammatical gram grammatical um, aspect of, of their competence um, but um, yeah um, it's something to work on to, to see how I can adapt these resources and make um, uh, like more, um, links or paths, learning paths, so that the students can move back and forth um, depending on their level. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, very interesting, really, to work to work on that. Really, thank you. Well, we only have three more minutes left. Are there any other questions? I'm just writing down uh, important uh, important words mentioned in those in those questions, like adapted resources, the use of multimedia, um, in the explanations, possibility of peer assessment. Yeah, interesting. Really, something to to try to implement, try to implement in future versions of of of, of lessons in next in the next years. Yeah, thank you. Two more minutes if you want to ask any other questions or provide suggestions. Could I, could I make a question, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Becky? To, uh, what about um, those attendings, at, attendees? I would like to know whether they have ever used lessons um, in their classes. Because it's uh, it seems that I'm the only, one, this, the only one at my university using lessons as far as the IT people are saying to me. So it seems to be a very new tool on Sakai. 
They can so, raise their hands. I see that at least one person's raised their hand, letting us know that they have. And now a number of people are answering. Um, let's see. Let's see. We have faculty here at Tufts using lessons. And yes, I use lessons at Marist College. And we use lessons at Durham Tech. <laughs> and let's see. Um, another poster said, yes, I use lessons, but it's not interactive. It's mostly to present the materials and the handouts. Great. Yeah, great. Yeah, so there are, there are different possibilities, right? Simply to deliver content or deliver content plus do an activity, uh, be that a test, a debate, or an assignment, something connected to that. Well, it's now 1145, and I'm supposed to stop the recording now, so thank you very much. Um, okay. for your presentation you. Thank and for an attentive audience and for all your questions and thank you for all your answers and your presentation. Thanks. Thanks to the attendees. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.